scientists' attempt to unlock the mysteries of our species' evolution may soon be drastically changed by the minute amounts of protein that are still present in the bones and teeth of ancient humans. The identification of the common ancestors of Homo sapiens and the Neanderthals, for instance, could be clarified with the aid of analysis of these microscopic remnants. Proteomics is a method that has only recently been applied to the study of human fossils, but researchers think it has the potential to shed new light on the past two million years of human evolution, by allowing them to pinpoint the proteins that made up the flesh and blood of our ancestors. The technology's effects would be similar to those of the recently created technology of ancient DNA analysis, which has helped reveal shocking secrets about humanity's past over the past 20 years. Many modern humans have been found to have Neanderthal genes, indicating that the two species must have interbred at some point over the past 100,000 years. Then there are our cousins the Denisova hominins, also known as Denisovans. Even though their genomes have been decoded, little is known about their appearance, behavior, or hunting techniques. Since we only have a shaky understanding of how these fascinating species relate to one another, proteomics could undoubtedly be helpful. However, proteomics has already generated some promising preliminary findings. According to studies, the collagen proteins in a jawbone from an early hominin discovered in a cave on the Tibetan plateau match those of the Denisovans. This is the first indication of what a Denisovan might have looked like, indicating that proteomics has a lot to contribute to our comprehension of human evolution. Studies on a variety of species have revealed evidence for positively selected gene variants that were introduced into a population via introgression from a different, distantly related population, a process known as adaptive introgression. Yet, the ancient blood that once surged through this long-extinct group of archaic humans introgressed into modern humans more than scientists believed, according to an analysis of Denisovan genomes. An immediate primary source to increase genetic diversity and environmental adaptations is gene flow, whether it comes from the same species or another. Adaptive introgression is the term used when the introduction of a new gene variant results in an improvement in the recipient's fitness. In point of fact, another study demonstrates how the Bajau, or Sea Peoples, of island Southeast Asia have evolved larger spleens as a result of adaptive introgression. The Sea Peoples are more comfortable underwater as the majority of people are on land. Their body and breath are entirely under their complete control. The Sea Peoples are some of the world's best divers, because they have a remarkable capacity to hold their breath. The Sea Peoples have historically been seafaring nomads, who survive by gathering shellfish from the ocean floor. In fact, the Venetian explorer Antonio Pigafetta, who took part in the first expedition to circumnavigate the globe, wrote about them in writings from the year 1521. The majority of people, some people for a few minutes, can hold their breath underwater. But the Sea Peoples practice extreme free diving, submerging for up to 13 minutes at depths of about 200 feet. These wanderers dive to catch fish or collect natural materials that can be used in crafts in the waters that surround the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia. Remarkably, the Sea Peoples are the first known humans with a genetic adaptation to diving, in actuality. Even after adjusting for potential confounders like age, sex, and height, a particular site on the Parade 10A gene was discovered to be associated with the larger spleen size of the Sea Peoples. Furthermore, the hypothesis that they may have evolved the spleen size required to support prolonged, repeated diving is supported by the fact that this gene is known for regulating a thyroid hormone that controls spleen size. Scientists use statistics that are sensitive to adaptive introgression from ancient humans, to look into the potential origins of the selected alleles discovered by our selection scan. They used either the Denisovan or the Altai Neanderthal genomes as the introgressing source, and the Yoruba of West Africa who are thought to be the ancestors of all non-Africans, as the non-introgressed outgroup. The target population, the Sea Peoples were tested for comparison. After that, scientists searched for connections between the most common regions found in this scan, and the top candidates found in the selection scan. The 99% quantile of the genome's distribution was found in one region that belongs to the gene, FAM178b. Only the Sea Peoples stand out among the populations taken into consideration, and the signal is strongest when the Denisova hominin is used as the source. Notably, this region was also suggested as a potential site for Denisovan introgression in populations from the ocean. 
However, these signals are not restricted to the Sea Peoples, in contrast to the FAM-178B region. Notably, Parade 10A does not appear to have undergone ancient introgression. In contrast to the Parade 10A variant, the variant in FAM-178B may have arisen from adaptive introgression, possibly from Denisovans. FAM-178B affects blood levels of carbon dioxide, which is a crucial variable to manage when holding one's breath. The Denisovans, prehistoric hominids that lived in Asia, are thought to have contributed to the version of FAM-178B that is prevalent in the Sea Peoples. Thus, it is obvious that modern humans interbred with Denisovans when they first arrived in Asia, and that they inherited some of their DNA. Modern Tibetans received a critical adaptation from one Denisovan gene that enables them to endure at high altitudes. Were the Denisovans also superhuman freedivers? Unfortunately, we can only speculate. While this introgression was going on, human beings have continued to have immune and metabolic gene variations for more than 700,000 years. The significance of balancing selection in evolution is demonstrated by genetic research on modern humans, Neanderthals and Denisovans. Our species spent hundreds of thousands of years evolving after splitting from our common ancestor with ancient humans like Neanderthals and Denisovans around 700,000 years ago, while other ancient humans adapted to higher latitude regions throughout Europe and Asia. Evolution never weds itself to a single point on a drawing board, rather, it is a series of independent design changes moving in a discernible direction. An evolving system or animal is free to follow its course of action. Its performance isn't significantly affected, but just enough to make it more accessible than the purportedly ideal design. By comparing the genomes of thousands of contemporary humans, with those of extinct hominin populations like the Neanderthal and Denisovan, another study investigates the concept of balancing selection. According to evolutionary biologists, the study has implications for understanding human diversity, the origin of distinctive traits, and biological trade-offs that may have shaped our evolution. Nature can maintain the balance of various genetic traits as a species evolves over millions of years much like a merchant balancing the weights of two different commodities on a scale. Depending on the environment, these characteristics may be advantageous or detrimental. Balancing selection is the theory underlying these trade-offs in evolutionary processes. This phenomenon is investigated in another study that compares the genomes of thousands of contemporary humans with those of extinct hominin populations like the Neanderthal and Denisovan. According to the study, our ancestors have been segregating among a wide range of biologically significant variants for hundreds of thousands, or even millions of years. These historical variations are part of our common evolutionary history. This extra sharing can be linked to a mysterious ancestor who lived during a dark time in Earth's past, approximately 700,000 years ago. The genetic diversity that the Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans share is a legacy left by this common ancestor. In fact, researchers showed an abundance of these mysterious ancient variants using computational models, some of which have survived since our ancestors first learned to make tools around 2.5 million years ago. The models also discovered that balancing selection can account for this excess of ancient variants. But scientists discovered that some variants date back millions of years and are older than modern humans. This raises more interesting questions about the importance of adaptive introgression on human evolution.